I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he's a... Uh, said he had just came from a neighbor's house and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. Does he know his mom's name? What's your mom's name? For the past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. I was led to believe that this world was an evil place, filled with cops who control, hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust, husbands who refuse to protect, and children who need abused. You are listening to the Roberta Glass True Crime Report, putting the true back in true crime. From New York City, Roberta Glass is now on the record. Okay, how is everybody? Feels so good to be back. Today's episode is brought to you by (laughs) antibiotics and prednisone. Feeling much better. Thank you to everyone who asked about me, gave me well wishes, sent me well wishes, sent me their story about what's going on in their home. Apparently this thing is going around or something like it, some kind of bug. But today we are going to talk about mom influencer Ruby Frankie, who was a popular YouTuber with 2.5 million subscribers on her two eight passenger YouTube channels. Her videos detailed the trials and tribulations of her life with her husband, Kevin, and their six children. Frankie started the two channels in 2015, but by 2020, YouTube had shut her two channels down due to community policy violations Before the shutdown, the public was similarly offended by what they saw on Frankie's channel. What they saw was her denying her son a bed, her withholding food from her six-year-old daughter as a punishment for forgetting to pack a lunch. Viewers demanded in online petitions that CPS investigated and ultimately DCFS did investigate, but they closed the investigation, finding no evidence of abuse. In June 2022, Ruby Frankie announced her next venture, a YouTube channel with her life coach partner, her life coaching partner, excuse me, Excuse me, that's quite a difference. Her life coaching partner, Jody Hildebrandt. The name of the YouTube channel was the same as the name of Hildebrandt's business connections with an X. The same as the two exposed the same harmful parenting advice with obvious religious overtones. On August 2023, Frankie and Hilda Brandt's public personas crumbled, and they were exposed when Frankie's son, emaciated, starving, and wounded, escaped to a neighbor's house for help. The 12-year-old was in such shocking shape that the neighbor wept on his 911 call. The two, Frankie and Hilda Brandt were arrested 
And in on February 20, they pled guilty to four counts of child abuse, and which comes with each sentence comes with a one to 15 year sentence and they are to serve those sentences consecutively meaning when one sentence is done the other sentence starts today we are going to examine frankie's house of horrors and answer the question hopefully answer the question was she a brainwashed victim or a monster mom in disguise. So welcome everybody. So I thought I, I, there's a couple things, you know, this is the first time I'm covering Ruby Frankie and I thought her sentencing. So we're going to look at all the new, so all this new tape has, so why are we talking about it today? There's all been all this new footage released of Frankie's arrest, Hildebrandt's arrest, their interrogations, the stuff with the kids is just heartbreaking, uh, alarming, will bring you to tears. So again, you know, watch at your own discretion, very disturbing stuff. But I wanted to start with her sentencing speech. And I found it, I've been to a lot of sentencing hearings, all the Nexium defendants, pretty much all of them, I think close to all of them as well as Larry Ray and Larry Ray's accomplice, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. And they're always very interesting to see how these sentences are measured out it very specifically, very particularly. But Joe, uh, Ruby Frankie gives a speech here that is something I've never seen before. So let's get into it without further ado. Let's Let's check it out together. It is so weird and narcissistic and odd and with not even a hint of shame. Basically, what she's saying is that she Jody did everything. She was just a brainwashed victim. And a lot there are there are cult themes in this. Now, I believe it's Jody's niece. Correct me if I'm wrong has come out, the singer has come out and said, all oh, this is Jody's influence. Certainly it's, but Ruby, frankly, my understanding is that she had this kind of abusive parroting style before she ever really got heavily involved with Jody. So she just basically pushes it all on Jody. And then she gives these kind of long thank you, like she's winning something. It's very weird. Let's get into it. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. And my few comments this morning. So I kept in her lawyer. Basically trying to put the best face on it. That's what the lawyers will do for you. Put the best face on a terrible, terrible crime like this. And you can see she's sitting up straight. She's very attentive. She wants to put the best face on. And if you don't know about Mormons, so she comes from a Mormon background. They get some of their, they have, Utah has one of the highest rates of plastic surgery. They're very much like Scientologists. They're aware that people think that their, their religion is strange and they make up for it by being very straight laced, very appearance oriented. And you can see even in her jail clothes, I mean, you would think by the posture that she was wearing a ball gown. <laughs> it's so odd. In mean, the comments my client wishes to make in a few minutes, we are not suggesting nor are we asking that the court deviate from the stipulated sentence contained in the written plea agreement. I want the court to know that through introspection and reflection, Ruby Frankie has become a serious student of her own actions. So very interesting that she took a plea deal uh so did jody and they still will do they could do up to 30 years uh, the best they could do is get out in four years and i don't think that either one of them is going to get out in four years uh, you know as crazy as our justice system gets this is a very highly publicized case 
I think the public would erupt in protest if they got out that soon. But they could look at seven or eight years she could be out, which is crazy considering the damage she did to her kids. And we will get into all that. But so here's her lawyer putting on the best face for her. In the very early days of my involvement with Ruby, she was somewhat defensive and she was still very much indoctrinated into a philosophy that was destructive. Fortunately, Ruby came to the stark realization of the errors in her thinking patterns and subsequent actions. To say that she was horrified by this realization would be to put it mildly. I have marveled at how quickly Ruby abandoned her defensive stance and moved toward her total acceptance of her actions <coughs> and to her sentence today. So far, she has used her time in jail to unwrap the layers upon layers of deceit and deception forced it upon her over the last four years by an unscrupulous individual. So this deceit and deception was forced on her. She had no say in the matter. This is very much like, so what I understand about cults or what I feel about cults is that even if she were brainwashed, okay, say by Jody, these manipulative people who lead these kind of cults, even there, if there are a cult of two or a cult of four or a cult of six or a cult of 500 or 5,000 or 5 million, hopefully not 5 million. Is there really a cult that big? I don't know. Is that they seem to know, the cult leader seems to know what each member is capable of. And Jody had to have seen something in Ruby to know that she was capable of this. Even when you are brainwashed, the reason why we don't accept these kind of brainwashed defenses is because ultimately you're responsible for your own behavior. And there's always that alarm in you. So they will know. So for example, in Nexium. Keith Ranieri, the Nexium cult leader, that is the very famous cult that's featured in HBO's The Vow, uh, has such famous members as Allison Mack. She was in Smallville, an actress. Keith Ranieri had to know that Allison Mack was capable of leading the slave sex thing. I don't know. I'm trying to be <laughs> vague for YouTube. That was a part of Nexium. He had to know that she would do that. She would be very comfortable doing that. Whereas Claire Bronfman, the Seagram's heiress, did the suing of people, the real vindictive stuff. She really got on from that. They seem to know what you're capable of, what you'll be good at too. So if she were really a victim of this woman she seemed to have seen in her that she had she was capable of this ruby realizes that she still has work to do in shedding those thinking errors and to reestablish a better and correct pattern of thinking and behavior yeah thank you for saying behavior it's not just her thinking that's so dangerous it's her behavior that's so dangerous it's not very often you hear a older gentlemen break down in tears on a 911 call because your children are that damaged by your own quote unquote discipline. Ruby realizes that changing her thinking, reestablishing relationships and healing are not simple or easy tasks. However, she is committed, committed to doing that work. I would like the court to know that Ruby Frankie is a delightful, respectful, and responsible person. She is open to feedback and addressing the consequences of her actions head on, and now ready to address your honor and accept your judgment. So she probably is very delightful with her lawyer. She really wants to be liked. You can see her in these YouTube videos. She's has heavy, heavy makeup, eyelashes, filmed in very attractive light, very uh, conscious of her appearance. And she's always skated by on appearances and her 
ability to talk herself out of situations and charm people. And I'm sure she charmed her lawyer. Thank you, Judge Walton. Thank you. Ms. Frankie has a statement she'd like to make. She does. Are you guys ready for the weirdest sentencing? You don't have to bend down. The okay. Are you guys ready for the weirdest, the weirdest, the weirdest sentencing speech I've ever heard in my entire life? Thank you. I would like to make a statement without any intent to change my stipulated sentence. For the past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. I was led to believe that this world was an evil place filled with cops who control, hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust, husbands who refuse to protect, and children who need abused. Isn't that interesting? So she gets to the point where she says children and what she should say is, or what she meant to say was children who need to be abused. But instead she skips over that because that's an action, right? You have to do the abuse. But for her, it's children who need abused. So she's skipping right past her own action, and that's going to be a theme all through this. But wait till you get to the thank yous. Those are really something. Barb, now, man, thanks for becoming a member. You've been missed, Roberta. Thanks. I missed you all, too. I'm very touched by all of it. All the concern. I, re I really am. I know it kind of sounds awkward because I feel a little awkward <laughs> talking about it, but I am very touched. My choice to believe and behave this paranoia culminated into criminal activity for which I stand before. She's behaving a paranoia. So she's not behaving in a paranoid way. So all the things that she just listed that cops, uh, what the hospitals injure, cops are corrupt. I mean, I'm sure certainly our media pushes that every chance they get. And uh, so that's not unusual, but this is very much the outlook that that men don't, won't step up to the plate, very much the outlook in Nexium and the Society of Protectors that they had, very much the outlook of Larry Ray. There's always a kind of conspiracy element to these cults that I've, to the trials that I've been to, which is two, but of the, especially the other cults, there's always a little bit of a conspiracy element because you're asked to believe something really not a little bit, not logical, go on your trust, go on faith. So the conspiracy element is always really married in with these cults, but no personal responsibility yet. And doesn't look, it doesn't bode well for her that she doesn't understand her part. She's, so she's saying, I'm a victim. I'm a victim of Jody. And then she's going to talk about how much she loves her kids and how grateful she is to everybody. Are you today ready to take accountability? Jody Hildebrandt was never my business partner, nor was I ever employed by her. I have never received wages from her or connections. Jody was employed as my son's counselor in 2019, and in 2020, I paid her. They have a very strange relationship. Doesn't it seem like those two were a couple? Am I am I mad? If not a if not a couple, maybe they were a non-sexual <laughs> in a non-sexual monogamous relationship. I mean, they're so tight where you're having your kid, I mean, you're basically raising these kids together. I mean, it certainly looks very odd. I mean, not odd that it that they're a couple, but odd that they're coming together over this bizarre, coming together with this, you know, sharing this bizarre 
child rearing religious outlook. And Jody Hildebrandt had the very same similar reaction. I did nothing wrong. It's society that's wrong. To be my mentor. It is important to me to demonstrate my remorse and regret without blame. I take full accountability for my choices and it is my preference that I'll serve a prison sentence. Thank you to the officers in Santa Clara and the Ivan City Police, Nick Hallman, Brian Palufo, Cy Pikivit, Mike Pondoyo in Tobler, John Ward, D. Lewis, and Chief Flowers. You were the angels who came and saved my children. I especially want to thank so she's saying, I'm, I'm going to thank the police because I'm like the police. I'm really one of the good guys. And this is the kind of manipulative behavior you see with guilty people who really don't want to own their actions. They just want to take, kind of take the shine of these cops and, and firefighting heroes who save these kids. And it, quite amazing what they did when you see the footage of their rescue, and we're gonna look at all that today. Detective Jay Bate. She plucked me out of a situation I didn't know how to get out of. And the moment she handcuffed me was the moment I gained my freedom. You were not the controlling ones, I was. Thank you to the medical staff at Intermountain Hospital. Your skill, tenderness, and professionalism helped to heal my children. Jody and I inflicted the injuries. There's the first, there's the first, first, first acceptance of any kind of guilt. But she puts Jody first, you see. It wasn't Jody and I, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, I, me and Jody inflicted the injuries. We both inflicted the injuries. No, it's always Jody first, Jody leading her, Jody brainwashing her. Right. Who just said, I just blame everybody. I just caught that. Out. Oh, that's Society Page. Hey, Society Page, great channel. You're not subscribed to the Society Page. You're really missing out, guys. Telling you. I've had people come back, say, I heard you talking about the Society Page, but holy cow, I didn't realize how good they were. Check them out. Not the hospital. Thank you to DCFS, the Children's Justice Center. Judge Basil, and other key adults. You've gathered my children under your wing and offered them love, compassion, encouragement. You were not the ones who were doing the brainwashing. Thank you to my Bishop Tom Hawks and my state president, Jim Nelson, for reminding me of the Lord's love for the lost. So much pain and suffering would have been avoided had I followed and heeded your counsel. I was the one who was deceived, not you. So that was, I believe she just mentioned Kester, who was her husband's lawyer. Kind of interesting that he tried to intervene in some way. And what he said was the, the husband or father of these kids was saying, hey, it's society. They don't understand our parenting style which apparently was very harsh, like I said before, even before Jody. Kind of a, just an in interesting reference there. Thank you to the Washington County Prosecutor's Office, Ryan Shaw. Is she accepting an award? Did she win something? She just won a third, an up to 30 year sentence in prison. I want to thank the I want to thank all the people that got me here, all the little people who voted for my 30-year sentence. And she says that she, if you checked out the thumbnail to this episode, she she chose this prison sentence. It wasn't that she bargained this down from six counts to four counts. It wasn't that at all. It wasn't that she wanted the least punishment possible and the least public humiliation possible, which is always such a consideration when you take a plea deal, that you're, you get in there very quick, you make a deal, and you do your sentencing, and the publicity is over. But with the release of 
all this stuff and it may take me a couple days to go through there's an interest it's all very interesting all the footage that's come out uh, about ruby frankie and jody and how they got arrested and how defiant she is but there's a real interesting moment when uh, when they put the handcuffs on her and it's a moment I've seen in cult, uh, cult members before, and it's just like a little recognition of reality. It's really interesting. We'll deal with that after her her grand grand thank you. She has uh, uh, about five hundred more people to thank. Legal assistants and discovery clerks, Eric Clark, you exemplified to me how justice and mercy are meant to coexist. My charges are just. They offer safety to my family accountability to the public and they did show mercy to me thank you to my attorney lamar winward and his staff i would not be where i am today without them thank you to randy kester for your limitless energy in healing my family my dear friends pam and roy i'm so sorry for letting you down there he is again, Randy Kester. That's the her husband's lawyer. Miss Shorty. Gifted 10 memberships. Thank you very much. Another great YouTube channel. Doing great stuff on the Adelson case. Because of your association with me, your innocence was called into question. My mother-in-law, father-in-law, Kevin's family, my cousins, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and neighbors, you all saw the warning signs long before I did, and you did what you could. You wanted to help, but I pushed you away. My mother and father, I have been utterly wretched to you. You have offered me unconditional love. So usually a sentencing speech goes like this, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I fell under the influence. This is what the Nexium cultist members, I feel so terrible. I hope my sentence brings some peace to the victims. I mean, Allison Mack's sen sentencing speech was a bunch of nonsense acting. It was so disturbing. She, it just seemed like she'd learned nothing. Nancy Salzman did all this... Oh... Neuralistic, uh, neuralistic programming stuff, and I got hypnotized by it. That was weird. <laughs> Went to bed, fell asleep for two days. Afterwards, I said, "Isn't that?" I walked out, going. It was sort of like every sentence was a snake eating its own tail. That was odd. But I have never, ever seen anyone thank someone like they're winning something. So she's supposed to be a big theme in her parenting style was taking accountability. So this is her idea and her narcissistic way that she's going to take accountability for all her wrongs. And the closest we got to that is her talking about inflicting wounds. Not great. I mean, I would be I, I don't think I would ever get in this situation, but I, I don't understand it. I, I just think this is a woman who needs more and more control, and this is her way of grasping control of, over the courtroom. I'm going to show exactly what a great person I am, how tough I am, how I asked for this sentence. No, she asked she took a plea deal because she wanted the minimum sentence, the minimum punishment, the exact opposite. Highly deceptive woman, highly narcissistic woman, highly dangerous woman. Love, and for that I have offered you unconditional contempt. My siblings and their spouses, because of my decision to roll around in a pigsty, I have dragged your families through the mud in public. Yet, when I desired to return as the prodigal sister. So she she drug, drug her family in the mud because she got in a pigsty. So it's like, oh, how did I get in this pigsty with this pig? So basically, she's calling Jody a pig. But she espouted all this stuff. She believed she was a true believer. 
she hadn't got arrested, where would it have gone? This is all, all this, the evil she saw in her own kids. And that's something that comes out in her diary entries. They're evil. They're like a snake. They're slithering around the house. They're always sneaky and evil and mean and have the devil in them. She's talking about herself. It's the ultimate projection. Projecting all her awfulness onto her kids. And looking in some way to control it so she can still keep this public image. Unlike the prodigal's brother in the Bible, you synced stuck with my parents and ran out to greet me. Your capacity to love is unprecedented. Kevin, my husband of more than 23 years, you are the love of my life. <laughs> So I'm sorry to leave to you to finish what we both started together. Now we have a little bit of the Wendy Adelson cry voice with real no disturbance, no real crack in the voice, no loss of support of the voice. She can still speak at full volume, but she wants to give us the breaky voice, the saddy voice, <laughs> the saddy voice to make us all feel sorry for her. We can all do this. Oh, Ruby Frankie is so awful. It's so terrible. I've been in the mud with pigs and brainwashed. But I'm taking accountability, guys. Like the next minute, full voice. I'm taking accountability, guys, because I'm a one tough cookie. I asked for this sentence and I'm taking it like a, like a man or a woman or however you want to take it. Like a tough woman, you know? Because if you think that she learned uh, her lesson in all this. Well, think again. Yeah, thank you, Joan. Thank you, Joan. The ending of our marriage is a tragedy. And we all wrapped around my heart. And now I'll never be able to undo. <laughs> to my babies. <laughs> so now she's bringing up that she's a mother to look even more sympathetic. Wendy Adelson does this. She wears her motherly shoes to court. Her working mom shoes. She talks about, well, I'm a mom. I have Cheerios in the car seat. Because we think highly of mothers. We think of them as nurturing and caring. We don't think of them as monsters like this. These little chicks, you were a part of me. I was the mama duck who was consistently running you to safety. I can see now over the past four years, I was in a deep undercurrent that led us to danger. I went to world, launching into darkness knowingly. I was so I was so well, the darkness and the undercurrent. I'm trying the brokey voice. Nobody seems moved here. How much do you bet that then she looked around the courtroom and the judge was just staring her blank, unmoved. And that's generally people who commit these kind of crimes against people. I have not seen any really that I've, how do I say, Lauren, Lauren well, Lauren Salzman, I, I believe, but maybe I, and I, I question that whether I was taken in, who was the daughter of Nancy Salzman, who was really raised in Nexium. And I did, I did feel she was sincere, but I questioned myself. Other people have told me I got taken. So I'm not above being fooled. But generally, in most of the sentencings I've seen from Ghislaine Maxwell to Larry Ray to Larry Ray's Ghislaine Maxwell, meaning Isabella Pollock, I've seen really hard people trying to manipulate the court and not much else. And this is no different. 
But I believe dark was light and light was wrong. I thought dark was light and light was wrong. So again, she's under the undercurrent. She's taken in. It's nothing she did. She's just in the wrong place, wrong time. Everything happens to her. Poor me, Ruby Frankie type stuff. I would do anything in this world for you. My last. Except treat them well. Except treat her children well. Because that would mean that she would have to let go of her her desire for control. And this is, control is so, such a motivating factor with all these antisocial personalities and narcissists. And now, you know, not every antisocial, every antisocial personality is also a narcissist. But not every narcissist is an has antisocial personality disorder. But... I would love to see the psychiatric report on Ruby Frankie. They often do that before they place them in prison. Be curious to see what kind of prison she's in. If you know, let me know in the comments. Sacrifice all feelings, masterfully manipulated into something very ugly. I took from her all that was soft and safe and good. I took from her my mother. How terrifying this must have been for you. Oh, I will stop crying. We're hurting your tender souls. So now she's attempting to simulate the total broken voice with a whoop, like a whoop with her voice. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? The whoop. It's like the dog whistle whoop, whoop. And, but then she comes back with full voice. She can't, it's really hard to do. It's really, even Alec Baldwin, I was going through Alec Baldwin on Stephanopoulos the other night. And even he couldn't, he's a trained actor, couldn't bring up tears, couldn't do the, couldn't really do a broken voice. It's hard to, for any period of time, manipulate your breath in the way that you need to, to, really simulate that kind of hysterical crying. You are you're so precious to me. I'm sorry. My choice to live in fear of the world has created a great vulnerability and a blind spot for me where I have broken hearts and I've caused people Okay, it's created. So her inability, what did she, wait, what did she say? Hold on, let me go back just a tiny bit. I hope I could get it. It's a little. And a blind spot for me. Where I have broken. My choice to live in fear of the world has created. A My choice to live in fear of the world has created a blind spot. So she's, oh, she's only talking about choices. She's not talking about her behavior. So it's not her, her choices. It's her, it's her actions. But she connects this to a fear of the world. But lots of people have a fear of the world and treat their kids well. A great vulnerability and a blind spot for me. Where I have broken hearts and I've caused people to suffer and I have betrayed sacred trust. Watching my community respond to my charges with justice and mercy and grace and love is all the more evidence to me how wrong I've been. This world is full of really good people. Yeah, that's really what I thought too, looking at the footage of the first responders, the police the firefighters, just how brave they were, how good they were with the kids, how patient they were. They were at, one child was found in Jody Hildebrand's closet. They waited five hours. They gave her food. She wouldn't talk. She had her head shaved. She was emaciated. She was so afraid and they were so patient and, and kind and gentle with her. It was, it was very moving. But now she wants to sort of Embrace that and put that shine on herself. And finally, 
I'm sorry for twisting God's word and distorting his doctrines. Yeah, so was it Karen who brought up that she wants to see her face? Yeah, I found that too. I was like, listen, lawyer, Sharon, Sharon Shipley. Thank you, Sharon. Wish you could see her face. I thought the same thing. Uh, I was like, lawyer, can you move to the left? <laughs> Law and crime, can you get a better angle? But this is the only angle they filmed her at, unfortunately. But I can tell you her face is probably pretty, pretty much a poker face if I had to guess. And Doris is asking, are there any men out there falling for this? Great question, Doris. I don't think so. I, I think that what she did is too horrendous. And by her not, if she came out there like gangbusters owning it all and not did this number, not did this, uh, her award-winning speech here, I mean, her People's Choice Award, for most horrendous, for most horrendous mother of the year, maybe some people would have been fooled, but I read the comments, um, some of the comments in the sentencing hearing and people were not fooled. People were really disgusted and turned off and the judge wasn't fooled either. My greatest desire is to stand in his court someday spotless and confident. And Judge Walton, I know that standing before you today is a necessary step towards that end. Thank you to you and your staff for facilitating my opportunity to take accountability and to answer for my... For her, this is all the stuff that she ran on her children, the game she ran on the children, an opportunity to take accountability. And she one day wishes that she would stand in his courtroom spotless. So very much a religious theme of dirty and clean and coming clean and being reborn into a new person. And as I've said before on this channel, I really don't think people's essential natures change. I think we can change our habits. I think we can change things that are painful for us. Our interests can change. Our politics can change. But essentially, I think I'm the same person I was at six months old, six years old, 16 years old. And whether that's some kind of mystical thing, such as a soul, I have no idea, or just genetics, I, I, I don't know. But I, I don't think that's possible for her to really change her core self. I, I don't I, I don't believe that's possible. My charges. I am humbled and willing to serve a prison a prison sentence as long as it takes to continue unraveling all of the misinformation I have believed and bought, swallowed and acted out. And for my family to heal and for the community to heal. And I understand this is going to take time. I'm committed to continuing my learning until all of my toxic layers are shed and I am ready to re-enter as a contributing member of our beautiful society. So that's the end of it, the contributing member of our beautiful society. So it's beautiful and she's toxic. So again, the same kind of thing, toxic, dirty, tainted, rolling in mud. So basically her essential nature, she's got to get back to her essential nature and shed these fake layers and get to her real good nature. Very religious theme there. Intolerant. It's a member. She's a real beauty, isn't she? Something. I notice, not for nothing, but there is um, a lot of these kind of cults appeal to people's narcissism. Thank you, Judge Walton. Thank you for your statement, Ms. Frankie. Anything else, Mr. Winward? No, Your Honor. Anything else prior to the court imposing sentence? No, Your Honor. The sentence will be... Like I said, judge is unmoved. Unmoved. Not having it. He's like, see you later. No, thanks for this. I have to give you this sentence because that's the deal you made in your plea deal. In Claire Bronfman's sentencing, if you want to listen to a really great episode, it's called 
This judge isn't blind. Claire Bronfman's sentencing is unreal. Uh, she got three, she says she paid millions of dollars in her plea deal to the to the state to buy this ridiculous sentence for these crimes, that these petty crimes that she pled to when she did so much more. And the judge gave her, so she was supposed to get, I think, three years, maybe two and a half, two and three quarters, three years, something around that. And he gave her seven and a half. He was not having it. And she's the only one who stayed loyal to Ranieri. And like I've said before, when people say, oh, the Adelsons aren't supposed to be communicating. Uh, Donna, Donna will never talk to Charlie again. I say, no, they all figure out a way to communicate. As with the Nexium people, they all figure out a way to communicate. That so, Ms. Frankie here's the judge giving her a sentence real quick. For one to 15 year sentences based on her convictions for four counts of aggravated child abuse. Again, they will serve consecutively, be served consecutively pursuant to the party's agreement and the applicable statute. Under the applicable statute, the court finds that, a cons that consecutive sentences are appropriate. Ms. Frankie, the last thing. So, so he could go with one after another, but he didn't. Is that you have only 30 days to file or to perfect an appeal of any errors of the court by filing a written notice of appeal with the clerk of the court. If you don't do that within 30 days, you will lose your right to appeal. You also have the right to the assistance of an attorney on appeal and to have one appointed if you cannot afford to hire your own. Restitution, as agreed by the parties, will remain open for a period of eight months. Any of the parties can bring that matter back before the court within that, that period of time. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Your Honor. Thank, you. Thank you. So he's basically like, get out of my court. He gave a much harsher speech to Jody. But let's check out her arrest. This is kind of interesting. Actually, I'm going to take a quickie. Diego Rivera, nice to see you. Long time no see. Thanks for the super sticker. Really nice to see everybody. Missed you guys. I'm going to take, actually, let me go through a little of this and then I can take a break in the middle if I need to, to cough or whatever. So this is Ruby Frankie's arrest to set it up a little bit better. Check out her home. So I kept in kind of a little of this boring footage because I found it not boring at all. Look at that home. No clothes in the closet, no books on the bookshelf, no sign of any kind of absolutely sterile, no sign of humanity, no pictures, no pictures of her kids' drawings, no toys. And it's not my style. It's not someplace I'd like to live. It's been described as this beautiful home. It's supposed to be very big, very expensive, but I find it so cold and um, really unappealing aesthetically. Nothing in the closets. She's got a huge walk-in closet. Talk about a, a, but a giant uh, flat screen TV that may have can't come with a house. I don't know. I mean, just looks like a kind of like a rented home. Everything is beige and brown and white and devoid of, of love and life and, and a family living there. You would never know who lived there. You would never have any sense of their personality. Very odd. So that's her 
phone going off. She's got all this very masculine club leather furniture. It looks almost like a bachelor pad or something. But I would think even a bachelor would be like, hey, let me just get a, a picture to put up there. Oh, man. That's just really loud. <laughs> What's that? It's an alarm. You want to turn it off? Yeah, where's it at? It's my face. I didn't know those are connected to it. So this is interesting. So she's talking. Here she's talking to the police officers before she knows she's getting arrested. But when she gets arrested, she clams up and becomes incredibly defiant. So we know that, I believe one of her children is talking to the officer out on the patio, and then the arrest comes right after this. So here she's all friendly. She's willing to turn off her phone. Is this too loud, guys? Or let me know if I should turn it up or down. So the Airbnb people were in Jody's house, I believe. She said, oh, there are Airbnb people in my house. And then she's on the phone with her lawyer. And her lawyer is saying she has her lawyer on speakerphone. And the lawyer says, well, you lied to them about it. And Jody Hildebrandt cuts her lawyer off on the speakerphone. <laughs> like, well, the police are standing right here. So you better want to clam it, <laughs> basically. Okay, thanks, Miss Shorty. That is that sound is okay. Is it a locker or is that the locker? Yeah, turn down actually. You good? Yeah. Okay. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said something. You're yelling something to him. I apologize. So you can see she doesn't like the police. No, that's okay. Not a problem. We don't hear any of that. We just hear her rudely go back to doing whatever she's doing. How are you, Sylvie? How are you? All right, well, it feels good in here. So, hey, we're going to be at this time. I know we have to say that you're already detained, but I'm going to be taking you back to the police department. Okay, so I'm going to have you pop up. See if I can. You want to put on one of our vehicles? Yeah, you want. Okay, just place your hand on your back for me. Perfect. And then right now I can put a finger in each of these, okay? So someone's saying, is this the same house that Jody got arrested in? This is just another area of it? This is the same house with the safe room? I'm sorry, I'm confused. I thought they had different homes. They looked a little different. Hey, Dean Walker, nice to see you. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Let me know. Jody's house has a guest house or Airbnb on property. So this is all connected to Jody. That, I mean, I just find this style. I like old things. I like antiques. I like thrift shops. <laughs> you know, this is not my taste, but my taste is not everyone's taste. I like oil paintings and Victorian stuff and old stuff. And I'm just going to double off this so they don't tighten up on you on the way out there. Where's your car? It's out there. Yeah. Bye bye, the command. Um, you don't have anything. Oh, wait, we just missed it. There's just this little moment. Sorry, I'm thinking about how ugly her house is and I'm missing the key moment. There's one part, it's right there, where she puts the cuffs on her and there's just this moment of recognition. And I've seen this with cult members. It's like a moment where they realize that the world judges them that their cult thinking may be wrong. It's just like a little bit of reality seeps in. 
and they realize they're being judged. And the moment I saw that is when she gets the cuffs put on her. So let's just watch it again. My apologies. Watch it. There's just like a moment of, I don't know, what do you call it? Recognition. It's very interesting. Perfect. And there it is. With the head down. What have I done? Shame. Quick shame. Just a little bit. And then she goes right back to the defiance. And I've seen this in court. The Nexium cult members used to come in like, meaning Allison Mack, Nancy Salzman, Lauren Salzman, Keith Ranieri. Oh, I'm missing some. Uh, Claire Bronfman used to all come in like they were going on a field trip, a picnic, and they would laugh and joke and kind of treat the whole thing as a joke. Kathy Russell, and sometimes you would just see a moment, just a moment like this, where they realize that they're being judged and that the world sees what they're doing as really odd, really strange. And then right now I can put a finger in each of these, okay? And I'm just going to double off this so they don't tighten up on you on the way out there. Where's your car? It's out there. Yeah. Bought by the command. Um, you don't have any. So thank you, Renee. C says it's called a casita. Lots of houses in the southwest have them. It's like having a mother-in-law type little house in the back of your regular big house. They had put her in the casita. Hmm. But jo oh, Jody's a monster. I mean, this is like the little, littler monster, but the bigger monster I would have to concede is, is Jody. Or, excuse me, or certainly the most obvious monster, more obvious monster. She's still going down saying it's society. You know, Ruby Frankie at least has a little bit more of a social finesse about her. I don't know if that makes her a little or monster okay, or not. That I I'm debating her. myself. Any weapons, anything that we're going to find. Before we put you in a police vehicle, we need to search your person to make sure you don't have anything on you. Is there anything you have on you? Okay, I'm going to search you before we put you in his car. That's just protocol, so I'm just going to have you step right over here. And then just widen your legs, widen your stance. Yep, perfect. Are you wearing a bra? Okay, I'm just gonna go like this through and make sure you don't have anything. You said you're not wearing a bra? Okay. Is that just like a tank top under here? Okay. I'm just gonna lift up your hair. Okay. Alright, you're just gonna walk with Officer Hines. No bra, that's fine. And then, hey, Is, nice. Well, this way or that way? Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to go down the downstairs, yeah. into the interview room downstairs. Sounds good. Thank you going you. down, or I'm going down? What? You're going down. I'll come get the I appreciate it. I was going to ask you to come through my car off, but I'm leaving now. So we're good. Yeah. It's still on. She looks very thin, too. But the look, I, I, I'm i just thinking about, you know, I'm just thinking back to the Nexium defendants. Hold on, I have to call. And they were a color of yellow and gray. They were on a low-calorie vegan diet, and they were frightening. They were so, so malnourished. She doesn't look well. She's a 42-year-old woman. Okay. Hey, uh, hold on. But you see this attitude towards the police, like they are the enemy. And once she has the cuffs on her, they are the enemy. And she is going to be defiant, button up the lip, save herself. And that's what we've seen all through this with Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt save themselves at all costs, make the deal, make the plea deal really fast. 
and Jody shuts the lip too. So I would think after Child Protective Services got involved, they got the message, should this happen again, say nothing. And it's great advice. I mean, how, how for those of us following the Adelson stuff, how much do the Adelsons talk their way into disaster? Unfortunately, it hasn't happened with Wendy yet. Wendy, I love there's a Twitter account. Did, did Wendy Adelson get arrested today? And every day they make a tweet, no. <laughs> It'd be so great the day when it, when it happens. I hope it happens. Well, I don't You want to ask, uh, I got you. just so we can tell them who we're taking down there. So I'm going to speed through some of this. Um, just her getting in the car. I thought at the time, I thought this was interesting. It didn't cut it out. <laughs> but now that I'm rewatching it with you guys, I find it less interesting than when she finally gets into the station. I think some of it's where she gets in the station is kind of interesting. I cut some of it out. Hold on. Let me get okay. And we'll go ahead and make everyone just stuff there again. Go to down every one of them. This way, yeah. Okay. So, spoiler alert, she's not going to say where she's from, how long she's lived here, any of the basic questions that really couldn't get her in trouble. She's going to say nothing. Nothing, not even they eventually ask her if she needs a, a, a psychological evaluation and she just shakes her head. No. I mean, she's like a mute. She goes through this like a deaf mute. Okay. You go ahead and have a seat. Said you guys have six kids. Are those all together? Are those all your kids? I can wait all day. So yeah, Jody and Ruby both do this thing where not only do they not talk, but they stare. It's very unblinking doll-like stare. Unfortunately, no head tilted to the side and mouth parted open like Wendy Adelson, but just a very eerie, dead-eyed stare to the police. It must have creeped them the heck out. So it's up to you if you want to talk to us about what's going on. Would you feel more comfortable talking to one of us? Maybe you want me to take a step out if you want. Or if you feel more comfortable talking to him, I can step out. I'll wait till I have a lawyer. Okay. So, you don't want to talk to us at all? Do you want to answer that? Are you... You don't want to talk to us about anything? So, yeah, this, this is just... All she has to say is, I, I, I would like to be questioned with counsel and it's over. Instead, she wants to really exert her control over the room and hold them all with bated breath that she might say something because she's not saying she won't talk. She's just not saying anything. 
very manipulative and it must give her a feeling of power. They're all waiting for her to talk. She's the big star of the show here. Your chance to tell us we're just trying to get your side of the story. Um, so it's your chance to do that. But it's up to you. We're just going to talk. And I mean, I'm not asking any criminal questions. If you don't want to talk to us, just let us know and we'll, we'll be done. I mean, I think if she could talk, she would say this. Don't fuck with me, fellas! Thank you, this Joan. This ain't my first time at the rodeo. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not her first time at the rodeo. I've already told you. Uh, you want to Ooh, a little anger there. They're like her kid. She's scolding them. I've already told you. I've already told you. I'm not going to talk. But I didn't hear her say that. They're always going to try. They're always going to try to get whatever information they can out of, out of you. I know how to win the hard way. Yeah, she does. Okay. Easy enough. Thank you. Is there anything else I can get for you in the meantime? I got the water. Do you need a bathroom break or anything like that? No? Okay. 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 End of show. End of show. Let's look at. I thought what was really interesting was the ch the children and so moving the state that they found the children a lot of this is heavily edited because it's so disturbing but let's take a look at it doorbell camera video from august 30th 2023 showing ruby frankie's son ringing the doorbell of jody hildebrandt's neighbor so here's a, a kid desperately in help and he's already negotiating. But what I find very interesting is he doesn't say please or thank you. I mean, that was something that was just like so hammered into my head as a child. Like he, he doesn't have time, time to fool around with with politeness, but he's still going to use it. He's so from a position of low status that he's going to still ask for, like, this is a negotiation. I have two favors. Not that I'm a kid. You're an adult. I'm a human being. I'm in terror. Apparently you could smell his wounds. That's what this man said. I mean, really terrible, emaciated, wounded shape. And he's going to ask it like, he would owe this guy something for just doing the human kind thing. Uh, taking me to the nearest police station. After asking some questions, the neighbor calls 911. I just had a 12 year old boy show up here at my front door. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs. The video showing neighbors caring for the boy. He's hungry and he's thirsty. Giving him food and water. Moments later, an ambulance arrives along with the police officer. Police officers, open up! Meanwhile, conflicting reports with how many children were in Jody Hildebrandt's home. I, I'm a police officer. You okay? They located another one of Frankie's children. We got Jody out here. You know Jody? As officers continued clearing the home, Officer Nick Tobler stays with the child in the closet. You're okay. Do you need help? Hours go by. Officers sit with her, talk with her, bring her pizza and play music. Then a local EMT came in. So unreal. Nick Tobler of the police. Incredible. Incredible. Uh, he says to her, oh my God, I start getting emotional thinking about it. He says to her, I have a badge and that means I, I won't hurt you. I don't know. He says, I think he says, it's a, I have a badge. It means I don't hurt people. So incredibly moving.
and here are the women's and they're just giving her they they give her two pizzas and she eats an entire pizza is incredibly dehydrated drinks the drink and eats the other half of the other one so i mean she must have been starving this little girl and her head was shaved and it took five hours to get her out of this closet we are safe seconds later she walks out both were treated and taken to the hospital from the time police located the first child at the neighbor's house to the time the second child walked out of the closet with EMTs, first responders had been on scene for nearly five hours that day. Brian Schnee, KUTV2 News. Jody, I need you to step out. So this is Jody's ugly house with her big, heavy door. And she's going to be really defiant. She also knows what to do, knows to lawyer up, has her lawyer on the phone, ask for a warrant. And just like Donna, Donna asking to see the warrant. Honey, they're not going to tell you about that warrant. They're not going to tell you that you have a warrant. This is a wellness check. They're not going to tell you you have a warrant. They don't need a warrant for a wellness check. People are suspecting horrible things going on in your home. You, you don't need a warrant for that. They have the right to enter the home if they think people are in danger. You're, you're out of luck. That's I out have, of luck, I lady. That's great. Step out of the house. No, I'm not going to step out of the step house. Step out of the house. Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're just going to step out. Is there anybody else home? My audience who isn't following the Adelson case must be so confused. So that's Donna Adelson when she got arrested. She's asking about the warrant as she was trying to flee to a non-extradition country. She's asking the police about her warrant. Maybe we'll take a look at that. I still have, I have it handy after this. This is just a quickie. But this is where, so she has her phone. She has her phone hooked up to a charger. She's talking to her lawyer on speakerphone and her lawyer says, but... <laughs> You lied to her. You lied to the police. That's why they're there. And she's like, uh, excuse me, Mr. Lawyer. The police are standing right here. So ixnay on the <laughs> on the lying stuff. Can you can you lay off the exposing me for being the the liar demon lady that I am for two minutes? Wait a minute, how do you come to my Until he walks away at least. Look, they go into my house. Okay, so now she's playing the frightened woman act. Does not work. The police have seen everything. Like I say, I, I've interviewed police officers. They are scary. They know people so well. They know the questions you're going to ask before you ask them. It is makes the hair on the back of my neck stick up thinking about it. They really know people. Just have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. Now, officers then run inside the house. They are looking for that other child of Ruby Frankie. They eventually find her hiding in a closet. Nearly 45 minutes later, an officer talks to Hilda Brandt about drafting a search warrant to access what has been known as a safe room. And then. OK, so then uh, then Jody says she doesn't know the combination to the safe room that has a toilet, a mattress. And no, no water, a fridge, but no water. I mean, this house must be so expensive. And she also says that there are, I think some people mentioned in the comments, but Airbnb guests that she doesn't want to bother with her arrest. Sorry, can you arrest me in a way or do your, <laughs> can you do your troublesome searching in a way that doesn't bother my B&B guests? The nerve of these women is so amazing. And a totally narcissistic view of the world themselves. And again, Ru uh, Jody Hildebrand does the same thing Ruby Frankie did in her speech, which is she says to the police, uh, you could twist my words. That's why it's not because I'm incredibly guilty that I'm waiting for my lawyer to talk. Then I want to save myself as much punishment, which is like I've said, their MOs, which is, you know, I can't, it's smart. It's a smart MO if you're guilty, if you're very guilty of a crime. It's a very smart move. 
But is it fun to watch? No. <laughs> no, it's not fun to watch as a true crime fan. But she does the same thing. She says, I'm one of you. I'm a counselor. People twist, could, you could twist my words. People twist words all day to me. I'm just, she actually says those kind of words. May not be a direct quote, but to the effect of, I'm just like you. So that's the thing guilty people do. They group themselves up with the police. Let's take a look inside that safe room. Once officers make access, there's a toilet, a mattress, a kitchenette. You'll notice no food, no water in the refrigerator, in the cabinets. What they do find, ropes, chains. And so what was Ruby Frankie during all this? Well, jail phone calls tell us that she was actually on her way to a dentist appointment that morning. She gets a call from Hildebrandt, and then she turns around to head back to that Ivan's home. Let's take a listen. When I got to the house, I mean, it, it looked like it looked like the movies. There was a red fire truck. There was a black van with tinted windows. There was there were two ambulances. There were 20 cop cars. Now, both Hildebrandt and Frankie were arrested. They were taken to the police station for questioning. Hildebrandt did speak. She didn't have much to say. She mentions an attorney. Ruby Frankie, though, she stays mostly silent during questioning. At one point, an officer even asks if she's in need of medical care. She is so quiet. Again, eventually, most both of these women are taken to jail in the same vehicle. Reporting live, Amanda Gilbert, KUTV 2 News. Okay, so... I just found all that very moving. Great job by the first responders, this case. This is the kind of thing, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm just getting to be an old fuddy-duddy, but I, it makes me very proud when I see people, you know, really helping out, doing the right thing. And at one point, the... The EMT works for the fire department. The woman who we saw saying we're safe to EF. And I'm going to use their initials. I do know their names, but I think it's fair since they are victims in this case to use their initials. And they are minors. Um, she says to them, she says to the little girl, I'm safe. It's safe. Um, and she gets out and she says to the her co-workers, this is so hard. And she's in, almost in tears. And her co-worker says, put some sunglasses on. And just all these real goosebump moments. Let me see if I have anything else. I might wrap it up soon or I might not. Let's see what else I have to show you guys. Yeah, I think that's what I have for today, guys. I, I think we've been going for what? An hour, 20 minutes. I think that's a I think that's a good way to to come back for for today. Um Thank you so much for listening. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this episode. It really helps. Uh, leave me a five-star review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. And I'm back tomorrow. I have a banger of an episode with Gadget, who knows everything about the Tate brothers. Just got a rest warrant for the UK, the real world influencers. They have charges in Romania where they are they are living now. And now charges from the UK. So once they're done with the Romanian case, which is huge, they have the UK criminal case, and then they have the UK civil case. So they will be doing these trials consecutively. I think I am the opinion that they are very guilty. Uh, it's 
and I can say it very confidently before a trial because it's their own words. So really fun show for tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Tune in. Thanks so much for listening. It was fun looking at these clips with you. And I'll be back with probably be covering Ruby Frankie again. There's so much to go through. Thanks for listening. Have a great night, everybody.